At the point I had gotten my first show, I was obviously interested in developing other ideas. And um, an idea that we had done on the men from Shiloh, and it had to do, I think we called it Love Bullets and Valentines or something. It had to do with some outlaws and some things that were going on. And uh, television networks are a lot like automobile manufacturers or anyone else who's in commerce. If, if something out there catches on with the public, it could be the Mercedes grill and the Japanese decide to make a, a luxury car, sometimes amazingly the grill will look a lot like another grill and it's, I guess you could call it market research. But you, go in, you can go in and pitch one idea to a network and they'll say, you know, we'd really like it, something that's a little more like this or whatever. That's why you'll often find a lot of television shows that will resemble movies. And uh, I mean, when I was very young, I remember Love on a Rooftop came along with Peter Duell, who went to work in my first series that you're talking about now. But he was in a, it was, it was barefoot in the park, you know, like cookie uh, cut. It was just almost identical. Well, we did a show called Alias Smith and Jones, which was certainly in the genre of Butch Cassidy, the new wave uh, Western. Uh, and you could include in that, uh, uh, oh, what's the William Holden movie? Um, the Wild Bunch. The Wild Bunch. And uh, some of the, those are all about the same group, by the way. The Wild Bunch is the group that Butch Cassidy ran up in the Hole in the Wall, and they were the Hole in the Wall gang. Uh, all of these, these things were the uh, coming of age of the more contemporary Western, moving out of the Civil post-Civil War period into just pre-automobile or concurrent, you know, just the changing of the West. And... Uh, I, I had meetings with ABC to talk two or three areas. The one they wanted to go for with right away was, was uh, Alias Smith and & Jones. And uh, that became my first, my first series. And uh, I wrote a script and, um, and I was, you know, we, we, went, we went to pilot and uh, it became, uh, it was picked up by ABC right away. It just was very attractive. But I had, I had written, I had, I had done McLeod, but this was the first time I had come out of a box with a show that I was putting together. Frank Price was my executive producer on that show, mm -hmm. and he had not yet quite become uh, uh, one of the one of the cornerstones of the studio. That is one of the guys who ran one of the networks, as was Grant Tinker and Sid Sheinberg and so forth. Um, it's hard for me to recall exactly what went wrong, but for some reason, um, Frank's father-in-law, excuse me, Frank's father-in-law was Roy Huggins. Roy Huggins was Mr. Maverick. And I must say, growing up and, and on the road in my early days, Maverick was my favorite show. I loved the tongue-in-cheek, the, the humor of it. And we were looking for that element. And in launching a brand new show, uh, I think there was some concerns whether or not I could handle it. Even after McLeod, which you've proven there? Yeah. Um, boy, that was my position. <laughs>